Hey friends, I hope you're well. I've got a quick love letter slash pep talk for you. Um, I am giving it to you from my window free apartment, so I do beg your pardon for inevitable noises of traffic and outside that uh, you will hear. But this message is about decision making and especially the hard, tough, kind of high stakes decisions where there's a lot of skin in the game there uh, is a lot to be potentially had and there's a lot to be potentially lost. So one um, initial statement about all decisions, and that is that they require these. <laughs> uh, the root of, decid of decide is decidere, and it means to cut. So <clears throat> if you are a person that, that tends to be um, indecisive, um, it could be because you intuitively know and, and understand that this is an eliminating process. A decision is cutting away at something so that something else can be had. And that, that can be hard, especially if you're choosing between good and better or better and best. But, you know, it can, it can get um, kind of paralyzing and then you're just stuck in limbo repeating the unwanted scene. So how do we not do that? First of all, we start with um, what I'm going to call a suitable mind. Not every mindset is good for decision making. One mindset that is not good for decision making is the unsuitable mind. And I'm going to describe that as um, it's a reflection of our, like, the default. What's the, you know, have you ever heard that, you've heard the phrase, uh, a resting bitch face? Uh, sort of like, like when you're not aware that someone's looking at you and you're like deep in thought and it's just sort of like the, the, the appearance that your face has when you're not even thinking about it, it's your resting face. And so some people, you know, might look friendly and approachable and some people just might look really bearish and bitchy. So, um, there's a resting, you know, there's this resting face and there's this kind of like sort of resting mind. When, you, you know, how does your mind tend to rest? And uh, I have some ideas about this and it's, all right, let me stop being around the bush. Basically, the uh, overall tone and climate of, um, modern life has taken a turn for the negative. Uh, you can look at our art, our social discourse, our news, uh, the streams of our social media feeds, our conversations with our own friends and family, overhear conversations in public, um, and a lot of times the pervasive tone is filled with uh, skepticism, cynicism, suspicion, oh, my favorite, suspicion of goodness, I don't know where that comes from, um, but we have become super guarded, and uh, I understand, you know, we've been hurt, we've been disappointed, we have failed, you know, life has come at us, and then every time, um, you know, something, it turns out in a way that is disappointing to us, uh, I think that it tends to just kind of add another layer of calcification. And I'm not just talking about a calcified pineal gland. I'm talking about calcified personality, calcified expression, calcified heart. So um, we start off, we start our journey off with joy. That is evidenced in um, the natural undisturbed state of uh, new human life and children. Children are ambassadors of joy until uh, some adult passes on the legacy of limitation, okay? And until sort of we start to pickle them the way we get pickled, and and start to teach them, you know, life is hard, life is unfair, no, 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 all of that. And those messages eventually just get internalized. And so 
sadly, um, joy becomes something that seems to be outgrown. I don't know why um, things like uh, a light state of being or happiness is seen as kind of like a bizarre thing for an adult to have intact. It is because it is it is pretty revolutionary <laughs> to continue growing into your adulthood and to maintain your joy, man. So I want you to know joy is a defiant emotion. It is a muscular emotion. <clears throat> and it, and it, it, what it's defying is it is defying that heavy, dense tendency that just, you know, pulls down. So it is pervasive. And that is uh, oftentimes the mindset that we're working from when we're at a choice point and choice points they, they, especially the large ones, they all are opportunities to change our entire life in some way. You know, whether you get a new job, a new lover, a new home, um, whenever you turn a corner and make a change uh, or make a, a decision, make a choice, then um, your whole life can change. So that being the case, wouldn't you rather do so um, in the best possible position? So what I'm, I hope this is coming out coherently. It's a lot of ideas that I'm trying to put into a, a streamlined way, but um, the unsuitable mind, it limits what you can see. The unsuitable mind is similar to, uh, imagine this as like an aperture of a camera. And when it's closed tight like this, nothing can come in or out. No light, no image. No action happening. The aperture has to dilate and open. This is what joy does. It opens and it allows you to have a broader view. And so then you are able to see resources, methods, maps, processes, skills, talents, connections, a whole skew of things that are available to you that you can't see from this pickled view, this tight clenched, uh, prove it to me kind of view. So from a more opened state, powered by the defiant emotion of joy, powered by buoyancy to be lifted up above the, um, you know, the mess or the negativity that you're wanting to get away from anyway, um, then it, it, it is a world of difference. Making a decision from a second story view versus making a decision from a penthouse view. So I do understand that life is riddled with a bunch of challenges. And so, you, you know, most of us are like, hey, I am guarded for a reason. I am self-protecting for a reason. Um, it is because I have learned that um, it's, it, it hurts to be let down and, and, and disappointed. And so, but that's the risk. Um, so one of the teachings that we get from the ambassadors of joy, from children, um, are a, a, certain, a certain set of traits. Some of them you will recognize. Spontaneity, adventuresomeness, Curiosity, willingness to risk, uh, willingness to risk, willingness to appear foolish, willingness to forgive quickly. These are some of the traits um, that are naturally in whole, healthy, happy children before they get pickled. And this is the state that we can and, and need to return to, to make a higher level decisions in our life. So then, okay, intriguing. Well, how do you do it? How do you get there? Especially if um, the things that are weighing on your mind, you know, are heavy and they are dense and they do tend to like take the wind out of you and they might make joy seem really far and, and inaccessible. So the way to be connected to that um, more powerful state of mind is 
to engage your imagination and allow yourself in a childlike way, in a surrendered way, allow yourself to feel the highest um, the highest outcome possible that you, that you could imagine. So I'm asking you to look at and to focus on not what is, but what can be. There is much to be said for the realist and the pragmatist. That you know, we need the ability to do that, of course, for a, a happy, successful life. But um, we let the realist and the pragmatist drive sometimes when they need to be in the passenger seat. When it comes to making decisions that could potentially shift and lift your life, then uh, a more jubilant driver, they can see more. I would let them drive. I would let them lead this, lead this process. So rather than focusing on what is and just rehearsing the problem that you know oh so well, get a different, higher, lifted vantage point by allowing yourself, open yourself up to the risk of being hurt, of being disappointed again. Because the reason why it is worthwhile to do so is because you also open yourself up to um, activating serendipity on your behalf. You also open yourself up to becoming a better, more resonant fit and match for the more beautiful outcome that you want. I really hope this is making sense. I'm 12 minutes in here already. Uh, so my hope is that um, we don't get so jaded, so sophisticated, so fancy, that and so grounded that we can't raise up above circumstances that we want to be above. So um, the solution that you seek, it is seeking you too. Joy helps you to be more easy to find. 